Good evening, Your Excellencies, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen. May I tell you, Mr. Mayor, how deeply grateful I am to you for the very generous words you had about me and also about my colleagues in the elders in particular. It is a great honor indeed to be asked to deliver this lecture in this city this year. I'm grateful to you all for giving me this opportunity to address a distinguished audience in a city that has had more than its fair share of the horrors of war and known how to rebuild itself, how not to forget the past, and how to use the painful experience of that past to help build a safer future for themselves and for the rest of us. I must apologize to you, ladies and gentlemen. The remarks I am going to make will not rise to the levels of those who made this lecture before me. I do not come to you with the commanding moral authority of the mayor of Hiroshima when he speaks of war and peace nor am I a daring war correspondent like Robert Fisk, who went everywhere, saw everything, and wrote about it in beautiful prose with feeling and passion. And I am not a gifted writer like Mr. Mortier, with his keen understanding of the human soul and his knowledge of social realities in peace and in war. Three years from now, you will be commemorating the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the Great War. What kind of world will we be in then? Will the uncertainties which trouble all of us today have been disappeared? Will the economy have recovered? Will conflict zones in Central and East Asia, in the Middle East, in Eastern and Central Africa be better or worse? It is part of today's uncertainties that we may ask these questions, but cannot really give answers to them with any degree of confidence. At any rate, being with you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, in this town on this occasion, makes me more aware than I generally am of the fact that although I never fired a gun in my life, not even as a sport, I was nevertheless close to conflict most of my adult life. As a participant in the liberation movement of my country, as a supporter of the struggle of freedom, for freedom of other countries, as a mediator, peacemaker, and peacekeeper, in places as distant and as different from one another as Haiti and Iraq, South Africa and Lebanon, the Congo and Afghanistan. In trying to look back at that experience and pull out from there a few reflections to share with you, my difficulty has been compounded by the excessive kindness of the organizers who generously told me that I was free to speak in French or English and that I could also freely choose the subject or subjects I would discuss before you this evening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the story of Buridan's donkey. Back in the Middle Ages, in Paris or in the surroundings of Paris, that poor donkey was left without food or water for some time, and then a stick of hay and a pail of water were placed in front of him at the same time. The donkey just could not make up its mind eat first or drink first, and he ended up dying of both hunger and thirst. Like that unhappy creature, I hesitated. Should I speak to you in French or in English? My French, not perfect, but was originally better than my self-taught English. So I started in French and then went to English and then went back to French and then English and then I threw a coin in the air, and as you may have noticed, it has chosen English for me. 
As for the subject, I did not toss a coin. I forced myself. I thought perhaps I could think a little bit better than that poor donkey of Monsieur Buridan. And at the end, it was not that difficult. Given where I come from, given my personal experience these past 20 years or more, given the time and place of this event, my choice was limited to only two things. Conflict and how to deal with its manifest contemporary manifestations, or the so-called Arab Spring, or both. I do again beg your indulgence that all I can offer this evening is a number of, the, of observations that are not very original, not very deep, and not even properly structured. 